Good evening, everyone, on the MyBC Consulting Facebook page. Welcome to another edition of the MYBC Virtual Bookstore Author Series. We're, first of all, going to give a shout out to Miss Lachelle Aikens, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, for bringing La Quita. Yes, you said it. Got it right, La Quita. Parks and us, uh, us together to talk books, to talk publishing, to talk Oh, lots of things because this this lady wears many hats and is multifaceted. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, Lachelle. So tell us where, where are you in this big blue marble? So I am just outside of Atlanta, Georgia myself. I am in Riverdale, Georgia, um, born and raised. I've never lived anywhere else other than Atlanta. Uh, I am the owner of PayProV Publishing. And PayProV means pain, progress, victory, because I believe without pain, there's no progress. And without progress, there can be no victory. We're so going to unpack people. that. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to unpack that because that's fascinating. So I help people take their stories from a thought to a realization. Uh, I am the mother of three adult children and four fabulous grandbabies. Uh, I, I love them. I know if, if I had known that being a grandma or a nana would be this much fun, I probably would have skipped the children and went straight to the grandchildren. <laughs> that happened though. No one's been able to figure that one out. <laughs> so that's that's just a little bit about who I am. And I love people. I love people. I love helping them to um, determine what parts of their stories to tell. Uh, I have a, a Facebook page, of course. I have the publishing, but I also do mentoring. I do uh, book coaching. Uh, I also am a podcast host, um, my own podcast called My Heart on Pages. And I have a radio show um, weekly and um, mentor and I have uh, my mentoring program of failure to communicate will be celebrating 10 years in June. So I'm excited about that. And with, through Paper V Publishing, I've published um, almost 60 um, books for people all over the country. And I started the company in 2020, August of 2020, oh. right in the midst of the pandemic. Okay, so we have got a lot of good juicy stuff in there to <laughs> unpack, as I like to say. First of all, I, I always forget to say this until the very end. You'll you'll notice it's just us. I don't use StreamYard to have a bunch of other people's comments and questions coming. I love to stay present because your presence is a gift in my life right now. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure I stay present for um, my reactions and uh, that you're going to be, uh, I know I'm going to have, they're going to come fast and furious. If you have any questions, throw them into the comments. She'll come back later and take a look at those questions. And afterwards, 100% will make sure that uh, like a website or contact information will um, get um, put into the comments as well. So let's dial it back a few a few years, maybe a decade or two, because you said you have uh, kids and grandbabies. So where did your career start? Because it's interesting to where it is today. Where did it start? So it started, um, it, it, uh, that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that question before. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, I was the victim of medical childhood trauma mm. and at, at the hands of a nurse. So when I was four years old, I went into the hospital to have my tonsils removed. And while there, the tonsillectomy was a success. But in the middle of the night, my mom had gone home to, you know, because they said I could have ice cream. So I had two other sisters. She went home to take care of them, um, left me there with uh, a young aunt. And a nurse came in and jabbed me in the side with a needle. Um, I was the wrong patient. And before you knew it, my, my, my nerves and the bones, the vessels, everything, it started to die. And as my mom was coming back, into the hospital, they were rushing me to OR to amputate my leg. So while I was in surgery, after about eight hours of surgery, they told my mom that they they removed the bone. They didn't have to amputate, but they removed the bone, um, but that I would never walk again. And so I had to learn how to walk again. And from there, 14, 15 surgeries later, uh, it started, that started a medical tsunami for me. 
Mm-hmm. And so I've, I've worked in education. I worked in corporate America. Um, but in 2000, in, in 2019, in December, um, November 2019, I had to go to the Mayo Clinic. So in November and December of 2019, January and February of 2020, um, my last visit to the Mayo Clinic, the doctor looked at me and said, while you're not, after I, they had done all the tests, while you're not dying, you are suffering. And I, I didn't hear anything else. I didn't hear any of the other diagnosis. All I heard was that while you're not dying, you are suffering. And I thought, this is not this cannot be my life. Well, prior to that, I had, um, I wrote this little book about my life, a little semi-autobiography called Walking Limitations, but by other people's definition. And I I did it, I published it myself. And I always wrote because I felt like writing was therapeutic, but I never set out to be a writer, never set out to be a publisher. That was not something that was on my list of to-dos. I wanted to be a singer. That was my career aspiration is growing up, I was gonna be a singer. Um, So when the doctor said that you're not dying, but you are suffering, I thought this is not, I I can't, this can't be my life. So I knew at that time that I was not going to be able to go back and work my corporate job. So I started having people while I was at the Mayo Clinic, I had people asking me, well, how did you write your book? And I wrote the book in 2016. So I found it strange that people were asking me, how did I write a book in 2016? Here now in 2020, they're asking me questions and not just one person or two people. I, I actually ended up publishing books while I was at the Mayo Clinic. Oh my gosh. And I thought, I, I'm like, you guys are asking me to publish books or to work on your books. I'm at the Mayo Clinic, but I didn't say that to them. I said it to myself, but it, it helped me get through what I was going through. And then I said, hmm, I have mentoring. I do communication coaching. I have the job readiness training program that I developed. Maybe I can do publishing. And Mm -hmm. so I started kind of thinking about it. And I had a friend suggest the name Paper V. And I said, hmm, no, no. And then I thought about five minutes later, I said, well, what does Paper V mean? And -hmm. they said, pain, progress, victory. Light bulb went on in my head and said, that's the story of my life. Yeah. That's the story of my life. So I started publishing people's stories and helping people to tell their stories. And in, in, in less than two years, I've been able to publish for 60 people and all over, all over the, all over the country. Uh, I've been able to share my story. Now, when I wrote uh, Walking Limitations, I never marketed it. I didn't market it. Okay. I simply told a few friends, some people from church, a couple of family members that I was writing the book. They purchased the book and that was it. But I wrote it because I was doing mentoring and I wanted the young people to know that if I can do that, you can do anything you set your mind to. So it was really to prove to them that if I can do it, you can do it. And so now um, I've had an opportunity to share my story all over the world. And so with with Pay-Pro-V, um, I've helped people do what I've been able to do, tell their stories. And although it, although the conditions that I have um, stemming from that jab in my thigh, um, there's no cure. There's no fixing. I have 70% nerve damage. Um, the list goes on and on. But when I started writing and started helping other people, it really started the acceptance point for me, where I began to accept the fact that this is my life as far as the physical part, my body, my legs, they're not great. They're, 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 there's, it's a challenge every day. Uh, I don't know a day without pain in the last 48 years. I'm 52 now. So I don't know a day without pain. However, Every time I'm helping somebody to write their story or tell their story or share their story or publish their story, it takes me away from the pain that I experience every day. So, I'd almost like to say as you're talking, um, love to be a little bit of a wordsmith and digging into the words that I know is that purpose is the panacea to pain. Yeah. Like you're helping uh, the panacea, which they all they say that there are what's a um placebo the placebo Placebo, effect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that panacea like i see that when you say helping others publish 60 books and that through suffering Mm -hmm. the opposite almost in suffering in your life is that is the panacea of purpose Mm -hmm. is 
how it's getting you through yeah. on a on a daily basis. I really ad I admire that tremendously. I you're right. You're right. Because every time um, people don't understand, Jeanette, when you think of pain 24 hours a day, some people have, they know what it feels like to break an arm and mm -hmm. you have pain through that time. And sometimes when it rains after it heals, you might still have some aches or, or you fall and you hurt your back and you go through therapy and it's better. You have knee replacement. So that's temporary pain, but right. people don't understand when I say pain every single day of my life, every single day, I've had 14, I've had 15 surgeries on my right leg and foot. Those that, that caused a tsunami effect where I had to have other things because of that, I couldn't have my babies vaginally. So I had to have surgeries from that. I could not have, um, I, I, I broke my, every time I would walk outside, it seemed like I would fall because I was a, a trip hazard. I would fall and break my ankle. So I would have to have another, another surgery. Um, I want the one thing after one thing after one thing, uh, I developed rheumatoid arthritis at the age of 11, um, stemming from the surgery. I, I fell and did damage to my back. Um, I have lymphedema with the lipo component. I have lupus. I have fibromyalgia. I have connective tissue diseases and they all stem from that shot. So if I, and, and I don't take pain medicine mm -hmm. because if I start, if I would, if I would take pain medicine, I would surely be addicted. Mm. I would surely be addicted. So we were, we were, was, we were, yeah, we were talking about that just before we came on yes. that knowing your core uh, core purpose and what we do in the in the writing books publishing books illustrating books or any form of art that is out there that god i believe in god yes. is dialed into our creative spirit that the more that we keep ourselves in that creative spirit mm -hmm. then addiction like you wouldn't you you had this beautiful core purpose of creation that if you took a pill, it would take you away. It would divert yes. you away and to a whole other place. Wow, what a profound moving of the dial. And we're going to yes. not needle because we don't need that analogy, but right. moving of the dial to why you are here today for all of these incredible authors that are out there. Wow, wow, wow. You know what? I have to tell you, I've never had it put that way before. And as you're talking, I'm thinking about the process of, of, of having to take medicine. And I never liked anything to take me outside of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't like the feeling of being lethargic. I don't like the feeling of being drowsy and not able to be clear and not able to uh, be able to understand what somebody's saying to me. I, I never, I never liked that. Even with the amount of surgeries, I wouldn't take the pain medicine. And the doctor would say, take the pain medicine. It's going to help you. You've got to, you've got to rest so you can heal. And, and I fought them on every end. So I, I found that helping people to tell their stories it's, it's a selfishness in a little bit of a way because Hallelujah. it helps me. Hallelujah, helps me. you know <laughs> that that's what you need to go into your heart, yes. to pump up your brain, to pump up your cells. Like, yes. hallelujah, you yes. figured that out. That's yes. amazing. Yes, yes. And, so, and people, there are people who disagree. Um, my children sometimes will say, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You should rest. You should lay down. Um, I'm, I'm not one that lays in the bed because it hurts my body. It hurts. So I'm, I'm better when I'm busy. Mm. You know, I'm better Ooh, when I'm busy. There it is. Hashtag I'm better when I'm busy. I'm better when I'm busy. I love that. I love that. Uh, and so, you know, being able to connect with people and, and realizing that there is purpose in everything. And God has me, I feel like God has me in this space at this time for this reason, because mm -hmm. I have the opportunity, Jeanette, to work with some amazing people who have some amazing stories. I mean, when we get to the point where we go from a thought to a realization, I've seen grown men cry because they've gotten their stories out. And and just the process, because the process can, can cause anxiety and that's normal. And I let people know when you start writing your story and it doesn't matter, every story is not one of woe. 
Every story is not one of sadness. Your story can be in the form of a children's book. Your story can be a cookbook. Um, so I, I have a lady that's working on a story called Sweet Potatoes in the Bucket because that's where she goes into her garden to get away from the world. And that's where she goes for her healing. I have, I, I'm doing a, working with a woman who started a cookbook when, when her children, her, her son was two years old. He's 22 now. And she's tried all these recipes. So she's finally ready. And that was her therapy, helping people. And then there are the ones who have decided, you know what, I'm going to put it all out there and what let the chips fall where they may. And I'm going to tell the story. And they, they're telling the story and just having that support and having that feedback um, helps them get to that process because writing has its own piece of anxiety that's the beginning once you're writing you know what to say who's my who's my audience and all those things that's one piece of the anxiety and then that piece is done and you can breathe and then you get to the marketing and it's like okay there's another piece of anxiety what are people going to think what are they going to say about my story um, are they going to agree with my story are they going to believe me how are they going to accept it that's the second piece and then you breathe and then you get to the part where you release it all and the book is out there and then you can relax, you can breathe and there's no more frustration. Okay, so um, first of all, I wanna dial it back to you. I, I see you in, uh, in high service of others. So I wanna dial it back to you in just a, a little bit of a, a selfish moment, a selfless moment, I should say. <laughs> is how many you've written the book that you have that you showed us mm -hmm. how many books have you written personally so, and let's hear the titles so i've written five books so the first book that i wrote was called a simple procedure mm -hmm. the second book that i wrote was called seven steps to accept to effective communication mm -hmm. the third book was walking limitations by other people's definition the fourth book was, it actually six, the fourth book was Good Morning Friends, a book of inspiration and motivation. The fifth book was called um, Affirmations of Beauty Redefined, Affirmations. And it's this book right here, it's this book. You know what, let's take book. that book and read the back cover, please. Sure. So the back cover says, this book of affirmations and inspirational quotes is a tool to assist you on your quest for change. You can read it straight through and pick one or recite, put, pick one to recite for the day, or you can choose your favorites. You can go back and forth as often as you like. Whatever you decide, remember to be consistent and intentional. Use this book to support you, especially on those days when you need a little something extra. These affirmations are designed to encourage and inspire you to be the best you possible. I pray that these affirmations and quotes help you as much as they have helped me. I have seen great change in my life since the start of my self-love journey, and so will you. Laquita, please turn to page 20. And choose an affirmation off of that page, please. Instead of stressing over my storm, I will dance in the rain. Beautiful. My birthday is January 20th. It's funny, whatever book that I pick <laughs> up, um, I just recently picked up at a secondhand store, Billy Graham's um, Book of Hope, Daily Devotionals. Mm -hmm. And immediately I turned to uh, January the 20th to I love find it. out what um, Reverend Billy Graham had to say on January the 20th for the devotion. So I thank love you it. for indulging me on that. Well, the, the second part of that is if you can't dance in the rain, stand under the shower and let the river of tears flow. Ooh, how many women and men have stood underneath a shower to hide the tears and they're just like, no, I'm having a shower, but we all, we're, we're crying. That's my solace. That's, that has been my solace for a very long time since my children were little. I found that that was the only time they wouldn't interrupt me when I was in the bathroom in the shower. And so I learned to go in the bathroom and turn the shower on and they would never disturb me as long as I was in there. Now I would come out and they would be sitting at the door but they would never come in as long as I was in the shower. And that's where I did all my crying in the shower. That's beautiful. 
So now we'll, we'll move to your service, your, your service of your beautiful self and how you lead your heart in the Oh, I'm sorry. The last, the last book, I'm sorry, was, a, was um, my neighbor's point. I'm, I'm sorry. My neighbors don't look like me. It's a children's book. Called my neighbors don't look like me. Love that. Love that. I'd love to know more about that title. It sounds like a book that needs to be in you know, a lot of public libraries and school libraries. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and uh, maybe in a welcome wagon gift basket. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, that sounds Absolutely. beautiful. So now we're, we're serving from your heart to help others publish 60 books. So it's like, okay, Laquita, I got this thought. What's the process? How do so, I work with you? So we talk about, first we have a meeting and we determine where you are in your story writing journey. If you have a thought and everybody has a story, 100% of everybody living and dead has a story, um, but sometimes people don't know how to get that story out. So we have a meeting and we talk about what do you want, what parts of your life, if it's a story about your life, what parts of your life do you want to tell? Because you can't put 100% of your life in a book. Number one, it'll be too long. Number two, nobody will read it because it's too long. So we determine and we, I, I help identify what parts of your story you want to talk about. And I do that by helping you create a, an outline. Okay. And that outline, and I usually say, okay, so if I were working with you, Jeanette, I would say, and you had just a thought about your life, you want to write about your life. I would say, okay, I would give you an exercise to do. And I would say, if you were writing a story about your life, Jeanette, what would you title your first 10 chapters? Mm, okay. And so for me, for example, my first, if I was writing another book, my chapter one would be trained by pain. Mm. And then my chapter two would be motivated to continue. My chapter three would be um, stop the madness. My chapter four would be over the river and through the woods. My chapter five would be, and so on and so forth. And right. once you get those, once you name those chapters, then you would go back and I would encourage you to write everything that you want to write about trained by pain. How, how are you trained by pain? Pain trains me in what shoes that I wear. When I wake up in the morning, uh, my day is determined by the pain. My pain determines how long I stay in the shower. Is this going to be a is this going to be a quick shower because I'm having a flare and the rain and the water is coming down and the rain is hurting me? I mean the water is hurting me. Mm -hmm. Or is this going to be a is this going to be where I'm sitting in the bench and I've got the shower going and I'm laying back and this is going to be a 45 minute shower? So my pain dictates that. I don't dictate that. My pain does. My pain dictates what type of shoes I'm going to wear. It dictates if I'm going to have to put my wear my uh, use my walker today. So I would write everything that I wanted to write about train by pain until I was exhausted. And then I would go to the next chapter, motivated to continue. So Jeanette, what motivates you? How are you motivated to continue? And then we would form that in the sense of a story. Uh, I'm a storyteller. So we would form it in a sense of a story. And storytelling is not everybody's style. You know, everybody has a different writing style. And so we would go on to chapter two and three and four until you've done all that. Once you've done that and you've gone through all your chapters, then I have you go back and look at your chapter titles. Um, some people already know the title of their book, but I work backwards because after you start writing and you get your title out, your book, I think about 85% of the people that I work with who had a title from the jump street, when they did that, their title changed. Oh, and so once wow. you go through your chapters and you start looking at your story, you might find that chapter two and whatever you've written in chapter two is a better suited uh, title for your book than what you originally had. Um, you may have a chat, you may have a title and when we research it, because I what I typically do is you tell me your title, I go to Google, go to Amazon and see if that title is already taken. And if it is, it's OK if it is. But you want your title to stand out and you want your now if it's a children's book called, you know, Walking Limitations, then that's a little different because it's going to be hard pressed to get your Walking Limitations children's book confused right. with your memoir of walking limitations. But we do that, we go through that process and then help you determine and narrow down a good title for your book. 
And once we do that, then we talk about, well, who do you want to dedicate your book to? And sometimes, a lot of times, oftentimes, people dedicate the book. I want to dedicate this book to my mama. I want to dedicate this book to my grandmama, who was always there for me. I want to dedicate this book to my favorite teacher. Well, there are, there are occasions when you might want to dedicate the book to that person who said you wasn't going to be nothing. You ain't never going to be nothing. You were never nothing. And you're not going to ever be nothing. You might say, okay, I want to dedicate this to all the people who said I wasn't going to ever be anything. I proved you wrong. So we determine who you want to dedicate your book to. If you want to do acknowledgments, if you have a memoir and you want to do a forward, we also work together on who should write your forward. And then we, I, I'm very, very, I'm very, I think the about the author part is very important. Uh, a lot of times people stick to what's on the back of the book you know, this little blurb about the author and leave it alone. Right. But this little blurb doesn't tell you where to reach me. It doesn't right. tell you how to connect with me. So I, you know, we, we put in, we do an author's page and I'm really, I'm like, this is the opportunity for you to talk about yourself, for you to brag on. So you've told your story, but they're bragging mm -hmm. yourself. If you, if you are Laquita Parts, um, Dr. Laquita Parts, then you say you're Dr. Laquita Parts. You are blah, 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 because your story is your story, but your accolades tell that you've come through your story or you have accomplished all these things in the midst of your story and your audience can too. And so how can I reach you? How can your audience reach you if they wanna connect with you? Maybe they have a story, maybe they're going through something. Maybe they just wanna reach out and say, thank you for helping me because Jeanette, I don't know if, do you know that there is always somebody waiting on the other side of your story so that they can get healing from their story? Okay. If you could see in my kitchen, when you said that little goosebumps came up on my arms or somebody called them goosebump pimples, uh, chill bumps. Wow, that, it, it totally makes sense because I know the experience that I've had. I have a big bookshelf here in my, uh, my little cottage here. And I would say at least 75, 80% of them are nonfiction, self-help, um, autobiographies, books of poetry, very few fiction books mm -hmm. that when I've read it, it just goes, oh, that person's speaking to me. That person, yes. that person, how did that person know that that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking? So that just, wow, that's profound. That is- You don't know. You don't know. Right. They don't know. They just know one day that they're needing something and and, and I'm, I'm searching and there is something in my gut that I need something. I'm missing something. And- you know, I, you know, everybody, everybody's not a Christian. I am. And I know the, I, I, I love studying God's word. I love that. Um, there are people who don't know that they, there are people, I didn't know that there were people who were looking for walking limitations mm -hmm. and you don't know until you're reading and you say, they say, wow, this is just what I needed. And when they say that they mean that because then the turning point happens. Right. They're able to, they're able to hold on a little longer. They're able to dig a little deeper. They, they, you know, the weeping and weeping may endure for a night, but in the morning, you know, they, they've made it through the morning and in the morning they saw your book sitting on somewhere. They saw your book in the store. They were walking past or somebody gifted them or they were online and they saw your, your Facebook. They saw this interview. They didn't know, but when they get it, it's like, wow. This is just what I needed. So that, that's why it's important for me and it's important for people to share their stories because there are sometimes people think that nobody's going through this. I'm the only one that they feel alone, but there is somebody else. And when they meet you and they say, okay, you know what? I can talk to you about my story because I'm on the other side of it. Well, there's somebody who is just starting on that story journey. They haven't right. even gotten to the halfway point and they think that they're not going to make it. Right, they're not going right. to make it. Oh my goodness. I could, I could talk to you forever, Laquita. Oh my gosh. You're such a, a beautiful, well-rounded, multifaceted person that serves from the heart uh, like to say, as you said about um, that book, you just don't know. Those of you on the MyBC Consulting Facebook page, you know that this is what I love to do is, is help people um, in this creative process. And in my own business, I use social media to make sure people mm -hmm. are, are acknowledged. And, and to me, when we've all read it on our Facebook posts, oh, I needed to read that today. 
Like yeah. if it was a nice little inspiration or someone shared a story or I needed to see that somebody was going through something or celebrating something or whatever. So I think that's beautiful. Um, just beautiful. So I love to wrap this up. You have six books. Yes. So let's take the book that you showed us, um, Limitation, Walking Limitations. Sure. And my question to all the authors that I uh, chat with is please tell me three people that you think your book would be a great gift for. Three, three people, when you say three people. Four. Like three, the three type of people, knowing what the story's about. Okay, okay. Um, who do you think I could buy this book to gift it to somebody, whatever the story okay. would be? Um, the first person would be anybody who has dealt with medical childhood trauma. Okay. It doesn't matter what type, medical childhood trauma, and they are suffering through pain. Okay. So that would be person number one. Um, person number two would be uh, a woman who has gone through the pains of um, raising a child after divorce, raising children okay. after divorce. So that would be okay. two. And number three anybody who has had to start their life all over from the ground floor up. Beautiful. That's a perfect place uh, to leave it um, right there. Thank you so much, Laquita, for sharing your, your precious time, your triumphs, your pain, your victory, and how you've come out the other side with a firm purpose um, yes. in life. The authors that you work with, I just know are so grateful on how you, you've helped them over, over the, uh, get their stories out there. You are a beautiful human being, my friend, a beautiful human being. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And if there's anybody who is interested in getting to know me more or knowing more about me, they can reach okay. out to me at payprovpublishing.com and that's P A. P R O V I publishing.com and let me know how I can help you. Beautiful. And we'll make sure that gets into the comment box uh, once I finish, when I push stop. So please stick around after I stop the recording because I do need to take a little screenshot so I can put our beautiful faces out there on social media to say thank you. You're Again, um, I end all of these uh, MYBC virtual bookstore author series with the advice of grab a book off your bookshelf and be it a cookbook, be it a comic book, be it a book, get a cup of tea or your favorite beverage, snuggle into your couch or your favorite reading place, take your mind, body and spirit to someplace else through the words written by somebody else. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.